You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare. Our boobs news. 41,517 people say they're not and are calling for the editor of the Sun newspaper in the UK to stop putting topless women on page three, which has been an editorial practice for 40 years, some calling it a British institution. Lucy Holmes began her anti-page three campaign after buying the Sun during the Olympics. The biggest image in the paper was of a topless woman with just her knickers on, despite athlete Jessica Ennis winning gold for Team GB. The campaign is targeting the editor. Dominic Mohan, take the bare boobs out of the sun, hashtag no more page three. So to discuss this campaign, with me in the studio is political blogger Charlotte Henry, founder of the Weak Woman blog, Caroline Criado Perez, and on the telephone, Dr. Rita Pal, a psychiatrist and medical journalist, and writer and broadcaster, Terence Blacker. Do pictures of topless women on page three of a national newspaper with a daily circulation of two and a half million readers have a justified place in 2012? I'll start with you, Caroline Criado Perez. Well, I feel that they don't. Um, the main objection that I have to page three is not in any way the nudity so much as the context, which is that it's in a newspaper which should be about telling us about the important things that are happening today. Um, and the the female contribution, the major contribution to that, is a massive image of a woman standing there not doing anything, um, which when you put it in the context of lots of men going around doing lots of things, um, it's very problematic about, you know, what we think women are capable of. So you're talking a woman with bare breasts versus a man in a suit going about their business and what people see in the publication. Charlotte? Well, I think the biggest problem, actually, is that we need more high-profile women, actually. I think page three in itself is a bit of a straw man. I mean, would I choose to... I, I read the sun, but would I choose to stare at page three? No, not really. But I th I'm more interested in achievements of women. I think they should have more coverage. And I think this focusing on page three is just a bit of a straw man, actually, to the bigger issues, which is we need more high-profile women in society, in politics, in law, in the media, and so on. I think that's a much more something we should be focusing on a lot more. But does this page three, anti-page three campaign not highlight these issues in some way? No, no, like I said, I think it's a straw man. I think we should be having a campaign about promoting fantastic women, like you mentioned Jessica Ennis, but there's plenty of others in all sorts of walks of life, and I would like The Sun and all newspapers to be giving them more coverage instead of um, us worrying about page three. Terence Blacker, what do you think? Does page three have a justified place in 2012, or do you agree with Charlotte that it's a... Bit of a straw man. Well, I agree with a lot of what's been said in that, obviously, women want as, women want as much positive coverage of women's achievements these days. I, I, I personally think there's quite a lot uh, in the press, but I agree. Obviously, one would agree with that. But I just think it's old-fashioned. I now think that, that we've sort of outgrown this. It's something very 70s. It's sort of, it's sort of carry-on films. You know, it's sort of, this seems to be more to do with comedy than than sex. And I, I think it is, it's sort of embarrassing that it's part of our national life. And I, I think this campaign, the tone of this campaign is very good. It's not, these should be banned. It's not thumping the table. It's just saying, you know, come on, let's, let's grow up a bit and, and recognize that um, it, the, the time for this kind of sort of mild titillation over a cup of tea is, is past. And, and we should, we should just move on and, 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 um, And you know, obviously, the sun is 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 entertainment as much as as news. So one can't one it's, it's no no good requiring them to report from Syria all the time. Obviously, there's going to be light stuff in there, but I think there are much there are there are, there are you know there are much bigger stories and more important things to worry about. And I just think they should just be given a little bit of a shake and told to grow up. So you're hoping the editor will listen to the Take the Bare Boobs Out of the Sun campaign? I, I, I completely support the campaign, and, and, and obviously he won't respond to the campaign, but I hope that once the campaign has done its work, it'll, they'll be quietly reduced and then, then dropped. Dr. Rita Powell, you're a psychiatrist and medical journalist. 
Do you feel they have a place in 2012? Well, I do, actually, um, to be honest. I think um, we have a time at the moment of financial austerity, and we really don't need cultural austerity. I think, um, I think the medical profession um, partly has a very paternalistic approach, and also intellectuals in society have, have adopted a similar approach. But I think real people in the real world don't really like being told what to do basically. Um, and I think the readers, I mean, The Sun has three million women readers um, actually buying the paper, and four million men obviously read it. Um, and, it, you know, and, and the petition at, at the moment has, what, 40,000 signatures now, so it's uh, proportionally fairly low o- on that. Now, um, I think if you look at history, I mean, the breast has been a, a secondary sexual char- characteristic, and it's obviously built to attract the, the, the male. Um, and it, page three is, is basically a national institution, and it's part of our society now. People have got used to it. And, and you know, it's, it is just a bit of harmless fun. I know that's the argument that a lot of page three girls um, have advocated, especially in the Oxford debate that they won. Um, but uh, I, I think that, um, you, know, you know, we've come to a point where... We've gone to back. We're in the Victorian age now, and we're trying to actually censor, you know, censor, you know, a, you know, a, a newspaper page. Um, and and the Victorians were like this. They always felt that I suppose the working class needed to be um, controlled in certain ways, and and maybe the working class were more animalistic in nature. But I think, you know, there's been a lot of debate about. Um, page three or, or pictures like that causing domestic violence and sexual assault. But actually, evidentially, um, the links are very poor. So the campaign that's been mounted, um, and admirably, and, and you know, she's obviously entitled to uh, you know, mount a petition, the, the campaign that's been mounted actually isn't evidence-based, to be honest. I mean, if we think about it, the availability of pornography has been um, increasing over the last 10 years. Um, the the the, the incidents of domestic violence has actually gone down, and the incidence of sexual, uh, you know, assault has actually remained static. So um, th- there's no real correlation, I think, from a scientific basis. I guess you know, if 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 you know, a, a lot of feminists wanted to run a, a campaign like this that was successful, that they could actually do a, a proper investigatory study on 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 the impact of page three, which really hasn't been done, and and also persuade us all. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare. And joining me to discuss the anti-page 3 campaign is Dr. Rita Powell, a medical journalist and psychiatrist, writer and broadcaster Terence Blecker, founder of the weak women blog Caroline Criado Perez, and political blogger Charlotte Henry. I just wanted to hear from Charlotte, really. What's your response to this cultural austerity, then? Yeah, I mean, I rather agree. I'm very uncomfortable with the kind of idea of saying this type of image is acceptable in a newspaper. I mean, we've seen quite much more, to my mind, offensive images, for example, of Gaddafi when he was dying was put on newspapers. I find those images significantly more offensive than a girl who has consented. Let's be very clear about this. Those women have consented are well paid to appear in those pictures as they're perfectly entitled to do and this idea of censoring something in a newspaper makes me very very uncomfortable Caroline um, yeah, I, I have um, a lot of problems with the things that have been said um, on this. The idea of um, censorship isn't actually what the, de- what the petition's about. It's about trying to educate people well, about the problems. Isn't it? Well, it's, it's not self-censorship so much as agreeing to listen to what people are saying and saying, fair enough, we're not going to do this. I mean, if someone said that the page was racist, you know, you would self-censor that but you know nobody would be objecting to that in the same way but somehow it's always all right you know when people are being sexist somehow that's something that women just have to put up with and of course the women have consented to do it no one's saying that and they can carry on doing that but you know all the other women um who see the paper and who live in the society that this paper engenders haven't consented to be viewed as sexual objects. Charlotte all sorts of people read the sun and that's sort of its attraction um but like I said I just I don't understand how we can just start, you know, choosing the type of images. It, you know, we live in a free market society where people are absolutely entitled to not buy the sun. 
I, I, might, I would speculate that many of the people involved in this campaign haven't re- don't read the Sun anyway to start off with. And actually, there's an, another point which we haven't really touched on, which is that this campaign focuses on one page three and one newspaper, which sort of fits into this zeitgeist of Levison and Murdoch and all those things. Actually, if you read the Daily Star or the Daily Sport, there are actually far more gratuitous, perhaps is the word, images of women in those newspapers as well. And it seems bizarre that this campaign has chosen to cash in on this sort of anti-Murdoch feeling. Terence, I'd like to bring you in now. Obviously, you mentioned the sort of, okay, you support the campaign, but there is a certain hypocrisy to it in some way. I mean, I think there are, there are all sorts of things that we, about which one can disprove. I mean, if I could, uh, and I do think there's a connection between the Duchess of Cambridge and, uh, and, and I agree with Charlotte Henry in that, uh, you know, it's easy to bash the sun and one could easily look at the Daily Mail and um, say the Daily Mail will have a disapproving um, uh, editorial uh, about the sun, but then two day- pages later they'll have a photograph of the uh, wind blowing the skirt up of a member of the royal family saying, oop, and they'll have a sort of a saucy little um, a saucy little caption saying, caught unguard- uh, you know, unguarded moment. Uh, but it's the same impulse. It's viristic, it's pathetic, and it's basically doing for its more probably more middle class audience what page three is doing for for the uh, for in the sun and i would personally think that's sort of more disgusting and tacky because it's pretending to be it's pretend it's pretending not to be about sex when it is whereas at least the page three thing is uh is is uh, is up front as it were uh about what it's doing i personally think for um for 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 rita powell to talk about um it being paternalistic to to campaign no one's suggesting it should be censored by the way it's just a, 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 a campaign to, to to remove it um the most paternalistic thing of all is if you look at those captions is presenting usually these teenage girls so presenting young girls uh, sort of making sort of fake comments about the news as that is the ultimate sort of middle-aged man behavior I would, i'm surprised that she doesn't have a slight problem with that i'm not saying it should be banned i'm just saying it's embarrassing rita then your response to terence suggesting that you ought to have a slight problem with the fact that these captions are written next to these topless women about what they think about the current news of the day i don't well i don't have a problem with it because uh, i mean i've worked in at the nhs i know my patients have read it i know a lot of doctors read it and we all laugh at, at don't do you think it's a problem that you're reason. laughing at the idea that a beautiful woman no, no, can have, have read nietzsche humor, can see. have you know I, I an opinion on particle science well i have a sense of humor about uh, about most things and and you know i think comedy um you know things like benny hill or carry on films you know they, they're always on television quite regularly and people love them and i think that you know if it if so you're, you're happy with people to laugh at racist jokes, to laugh at rape jokes. You think that this isn't a problem at all. You think that it doesn't matter that laughter is about mocking. Shouldn't laughter be about something actually being humorous rather than, well, you know, satire is meant to be the, pa- the, the weapon of the weak against the powerful. And, you know, News and Brief is certainly not doing that. Well, hang, hang on a second. The first, the first aspect is you can't regulate a person's mind. You can't legislate against a person's mind. I, I mean, I... I disapprove of a lot of things, all right? I, could, I petition about a lot of things as well if you look at change.org, all right? So, but my, my point really is this, you know, a lot of people find wit in various aspects of society. We can't go around controlling every single, single thing just because we appro- disapprove of it. Of course we can't, uh, but we can not. ask, you know, the highest circulating newspaper to show a little bit of respect and not keep putting out day after day the same message that beautiful women uh, are kind of stupid. I, but I, think Charlotte. Charlotte. I don't think that they do uh, put across beautiful women are stupid. That's just not the, the, the ethos of it. Charlotte Henry, you, you next. So I, I do just think this comes back to my original point, which is actually the issue is not page three, which I don't actually, I don't accept a lot of the things that have been put forward that, you know, page three advocates a rape culture and a sexual assault culture of women. I just do not accept that. But I think the bigger issue is actually we need to have more prominent women and their achievements covered in the media. And that's what I actually care much more about than news in brief, which, you know, okay, I would prefer it wasn't there. I think it's a bit silly, but I don't I don't find the notion of it offensive. I think it's only don't don't you think it would be just plain odd if you had opposite page three, say on page two, something about women's achievements and about how well they're doing. And then on page three, 
you have something which absolutely undermines the whole idea of equality. No, uh, but I don't accept that it, it undermines it, equality. It, 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 I, I've got a question about this, actually. Well, yeah, I, stop. Right. OK, Terence, finish, and then, and then Caroline next. <laughs> no, I would just... I, I'm not sure that I'm, I quite... I really go along with this idea. Uh, firstly, I think women do get... Well, I think the achievements of... Uh, no, 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 I mean... Well, stop. No, Terence. But, but if... But if the idea is to produce more positive news about women, more positive images, then surely it's logical that you can't have this incredibly patronizing, uh, patronizing business of having, say you had something, a, a page two about women's achievements, then opposite, you've got Tracy, age 17, ooh, what a lovely pair, commenting on Syria. That's, it's, an, it's an absurdity. It makes everything look silly. It undermines the whole idea well, it's of It's an women absurdity being for you. It's equal. a subjective opinion, isn't well, it? And we also have highly sexualised images of men, but because they're balanced out with sways of achieve, men's, male achievement, yeah. we don't see it in that way. The issue is that it, page three is not balanced. Right, out. but I must bring in Caroline now because I did interrupt her. Okay, I've, uh, I've got a number of things to, to ask, really. Um, I completely agree with Charlotte that we do need more prominent women um, in the media, and that is obviously a very real problem. Um, however, I, I strongly feel that page three, being the largest representation of what women do in a newspaper, um, fosters an, uh, a sort of let's t to use a labor phrase uh, poverty of aspiration for women and that's based on studies that demonstrate um, a massive lack of self-esteem in women based around their looks um, and young women and you know there was a study recently released that said that um, if this wasn't changed the likelihood of a f another female prime minister was going to drop from 73 percent to 63 percent which is a pretty shocking drop I mean it should be a hundred percent likelihood that there's going to be a future female prime minister and you know the I would question the idea that page three doesn't undermine the idea that women can be powerful um you know based What's on last ba based on based on last friday's um son's page three which was a picture of hattie from campbell page 23 which was meant to basically say to harriet Harman, you know you may be a really powerful politician but you're just a pair of tits to us and i'm sorry if they use it in that way to attack a female politician, then how can anyone claim that they think it isn't undermining? They were trying to undermine her by showing her as just a piece of meat. C can I ask you a question? You may, yeah. Uh, yes. What's wrong with the career aim of being a page three model? There's nothing wrong with being a, uh, the career aim of being a page three model. Yeah, what's well, wrong is no. What's matter. what's wrong is the idea that it's the only career aim. It's very limiting to suggest that women what's are wrong? only valued according to their looks, as Can the sun yeah. repeatedly yeah. says by everyone who disagrees is fat, ugly, jealous, flat-chested. You know, you can't disagree unless you know you're somehow jealous that you can't look as good as them. Well, that's, Terence, that's their view, Terence isn't it? next. But, but Terence. they're entitled to a view. I mean, it's, it's Article 10 of the, of the European Convention of Human Rights. Of course, they're entitled to a view, but the uh, view says a lot. To your view. The view says a lot about what the the image that page three represents. Terence, what did you want um, to say? Well, um, I don't think anyone here is um, arguing that um, people shouldn't have views. Uh, my view about this is that uh, um, I write books for children, and I go into schools quite a lot, and Rita's absolutely wrong. I mean, she's not wrong. I, I would disagree when she say what's wrong with having, uh, with having an aspiration to be a pastry girl. The, the, the fact is, an extraordinary... If you, if you talk to children in secondary schools, an extraordinary number of the girls sees that as a really... You know, they want to be Jordan, they want to... That's, and I do, I do think that's a real problem when we've got really quite bright children and their parents rather supporting them. And... Um, I, are you, are I you saying page three girls aren't could, bright because they recently won the Oxford debate a few years ago? So, they, so their debates actually, you know, were worthwhile, really, weren't they? I think what Terence is saying is what the newspaper represents in terms of aspiration for young children growing up, be it male or female. These female children in the, these young women in schools are seeing a page three topless model in a national newspaper and seeing it, it's accepted. But they're not actually see, seeing 
page three specifically. I mean, they've, they've got lots of environmental factors. There's the internet. There's Playboy. There's lots of. But they're you know, not contextual. They're not con- context. You know, contextualized by news. Well, That's well, the have, problem. I've got no problem with nudity. As well, in fact, one of the studies that uh, actually, actually, you quoted it yourself, I think, Caroline, um, about uh, lads magazines. So the the authors actually stated there that and it, it, that, that the interviews on YouTube. If you want to go and have a look at it, they stated that censorship is not a solution, and they advocated good sex education. And I think that's where the, the problems lie. Um, I, I mean, uh, the perceptions, obviously, of of how people will perceive page three in terms of career aspirations, and people have careers guidance through school. We did. Everyone does. And it's, it's you know, we no one's actually forced into going to apply for page three or whatever, but um, it, it is a careers option, and it's an admirable careers option, just like being a doctor, an engineer, a writer such as yourself. You know, so I think all these are, and I think it's, it's degrading for people who who Did you actually. Consider it yourself. Pardon? Did you ever consider it as a career yourself? I would have considered it, to be honest. Yes, I mean, in retrospect, you know, I, I'm I'm actually from an Asian family and a quite a conservative Asian family. We were all obviously, you know, taught to be educated and and be very intelligent and all that sort of thing. And I made it through medical school and subsequently onwards. But I think, you know, in in terms of, you know, I've, if I've you had a daughter, if you may, I don't know what your position is. If I, you had I don't a daughter, have any children. She no. said, "I can't make up my mind between being." A doctor and a page three girl, would you say, well... I, I think the photograph would look pretty good with a white coat and nothing underneath. But I the think white coat might be covering the boobs, me, that's the point. In that <laughs> I mean, so your daughter says, um, I, would like to, I, I can't make up my mind uh, whether as I want to pursue a career as a topless model or a doctor. What would your answer be? Well, I'd, I'd um, basically give them the information for both and let them make their own judgment. No, no, but what are you have an objection. You're a parent, I you actually would not have an... I have nieces, by the way. I would not have an objection to them wanting to go and model or, or wanting to go no, and... But, no, but if they're asking your advice between a doctor and a... You know, you, you, they're, they're turning to you. They're teenagers. They're 16. They can pose... Of course, teenagers have brains now. as well, you know, and, and certainly my nieces have brains. And what do you do with, oh, so with you don't teenagers? Give advice. And, you won't uh, give advice. Sorry? You don't give advice. Right, moving on. No, no, moving no, on. No, no, moving on. That point. Can I just Go on, just finish that point. Seconds on that point. I don't think teenagers need to be dictated to, that's the first thing. I think they need to be given the information and I need to, they, they can actually make their own minds up about things. And if you're talking about younger children, maybe the advice issue works. So anyway, that was the point I wanted to make. Yeah. But I think we need to talk just a tiny bit about the actual campaign. Yeah. I don't want to lose sight of that. It's the fact that it is it has a a fixture in a family newspaper. Okay, first of all, I suspect most people who run this campaign have never read The Sun, but at the weekend, the the page three models are not topless. There are models on page three, but they are clothed, just about. Um, and With a white coat. <laughs> you, like, um, you like my idea. No, but the, the point is that when it is a family read at the weekend, you know, a more conceivable time that you know, ch- children, younger people might see those images, they are covered and they do respect that kind of family image. And I return to the point that I find it very bizarre this campaign focus is just on the sun. But also, we're talking about how bad it is, you know, women want to be glam models, whatever. There are plenty of very vain men out there who would love to be models as well. Caroline. Um, the, uh, the, the point, actually, that you raise about the sun at the weekend not having a topless model, you know, to me, that just sort of, that's quite hypocritical. That's sort of saying that you know, actually, it's not very good, and if kids are going to see it, we probably shouldn't have that. Um, which, which you know, makes it really hard for them to say it's just a harmless bit of fun. If they think it's so harmless, then why don't they have it at the weekend? And my final point would be to um, address this idea of, of um, you know, aspirations for, for glamour models. Um, one of the things that I find uh, most problematic about the pervasiveness of having a woman in a newspaper just based on the fact that she's very pretty um, is that it therefore um, adds to this culture where women are judged on the way that they look. And it's an extra thing, no matter what you do, whatever career you're going into, and which should have nothing to do with looks, you are judged additionally on the way you look. You look. Let's take, you know, Hillary Clinton, who um, who is now the Secretary of State. Yeah, and she, she's the Secretary of State, and she had to have weeks of media coverage over why she wasn't wearing makeup and why she was wearing glasses. I mean, what kind of society is that? Well, would that ever have happened to David Cameron, Barack yes, Obama? You know, yes. would they have had to sort of make a statement about the fact that they were wearing glasses? Of course, they wouldn't. Um, but we absolutely have discussions about Barack Obama's sexy salt and pepper hair and all the rest of it. Or David Cameron's bald spot. It is nothing I mean. like a whole media campaign based solely. You know, there were weeks of 
articles about the meaning behind the fact that she was wearing glasses. It was absolutely ridiculous. She's okay. the most powerful woman in the world. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare, and we're discussing the anti-page three campaign in the Sun newspaper. Joining me in the studio is political blogger Charlotte Henry, founder of the weak woman blog Caroline Criado Perez, Dr. Rita Pal, psychiatrist and medical journalist, and writer and broadcaster Terence Blecker. Yes. Obviously, you support the anti-page three campaign, but and you obviously questioned Rita as she as whether she would give advice to someone who is looking for a career, whether they choose to be a doctor or a glamour model. Now, for you, what issues arise from this anti-Page 3 campaign that are the biggest ones? I think the Page 3, and, and, and I would put in, I would, in, would put in other kinds of sexualization of women. I'm, I'm not in favour of censorship of really virtually any kind, of, but certainly not in this area. But I think we do have to ask ourselves if this uh, way of presenting women, this sort of light titillation, um, is, I mean, I know it's part of life. I know there's porn at the click of a switch and a uh, click of a mouse and that it's all around us. But I think the difference is, and particularly with children with, and with young girls and young boys, is that it's just normalized. The point that you made, Juliet, is it's normalized. It's just you open your paper. It could be about the party conference. It could be Tracy with, with her tits out. And uh, that, I just think, is bad for young people's heads. And I think you should begin to recognize that actually it's, it's, it's affecting us in all sorts of ways. And as I said at the beginning, I just think it's time for us to grow up and to evolve a little as a society. I'm not at all in favor. You know, I'm quite libertarian in, general, in my general approach to life. But I just think, you know, maybe we should just say, look, come on, let's grow up. Charlotte Henry, a final word from you. I mean... Maybe we should grow up, but, you know, we, we have paid three, and frankly, there are far more damaging things to women than a, a bit of, you know, glamour modelling. And actually, we need to look at the positive contributions of women a lot more. And I do take points about, you know, constantly talking about women's appearance, and that's fine, but I don't believe it's related to page three. I think we have a wider societal issue around not promoting women enough, and I think we need to look at that instead of focusing on this straw man of page three, which basically this whole campaign feels like we've returned to the 70s or 80s. Dr. Rita Pal, you mentioned the, uh, the carry-on films that, when we're talking yeah. about return to the 70s. A final word from you. I think it's an... I mean, I don't think the page three um, uh, issue should have been given so much publicity because it's actually well, given the page three issue, you know, uh, the page three itself more and more publicity as, as, as we speak, and we're doing the same here. Um, but the, but the, the, iron, iron, uh, the ironic issue about page three is that we accept nude art at the National Gallery and I'm sure Ter Terence will, will know that many school children go to the National Gallery um, and you've got paintings there like the Cupid Folly in Time, I, I don't know if you've seen it but, but it's, it's basically um, as many art historians will tell you, it's, 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 it's quite explicit in nature But, you know, but it's in an art gallery, not a newspaper Well, the, uh, the, the picture's all over the internet the, the, the But they're Google on the internet project. not a newspaper. So what's the difference between that and the newspaper. No. The point of the newspaper is the clues in the name. It's a newspaper. It's for news. And finally, I would just like to add that for everyone who says it's not such a big deal, why do we care about it? In that case, why not get rid of it? I mean, what is it for? I've yet to hear anyone make a positive... Well, excuse to me, to make a positive point. argument for page three. No one can say people what purpose it. what purpose it serves. One final point. I think a, a, lot, a lot of people can, you know, concentrate on power and achievement. And very few people consider the word happiness. I I think that happiness is extremely important in life. Okay, whatever makes people happy, you know, they could do for their career. And I think that so long know, as they're not damaging anyone else, presumably, you would agree. Well, damaging, yes, of course. Right. But, but well, there we go. In what way? I mean, you have the right not to buy the sun. Right. I'm going to end the discussion yeah. there. Thank you very much for all my guests for joining me. Political political blogger Charlotte Henry, founder of the Weak Woman blog Caroline Criado Perez, on the telephone Dr. Rita Pal, and writer and broadcaster Terence Blacker. Sun is, is, is entertainment as much as, as news, so one can't, one, it's, it's no, no good requiring them to report from Syria all the time. Obviously, there's going to be light stuff in there, but I think there are much, there are, there are, there are, you know, there are much bigger stories and more important things to worry about, and I just think they should just be given a little bit of a shake and told to grow up.
so you're hoping the editor will listen to the Take the Bare Boobs Out of the Sun campaign. I, I completely support the campaign, and, and, and obviously he won't respond to the campaign, but I hope that once the campaign has done its work, it'll, they'll be quietly reduced and then, then dropped. Dr. Rita Powell, you're a psychiatrist and medical journalist. Do you feel they have a place in 2012? Well, I do, actually, um, to be honest. I think um, we have a time at the moment of financial austerity, and we really don't need cultural austerity. I think, um, I think the medical profession um, partly has a very paternalistic approach, and also intellectuals in society. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London with me, Juliet Spare. Our boobs news. 41,517 people say they're not and are calling for the editor of the Sun newspaper in the UK to stop putting topless women on page three, which has been an editorial practice for 40 years, some calling it a British institution. Lucy Holmes began her anti-page three campaign after buying the Sun during the Olympics. The biggest image in the paper was of a topless woman with just her knickers on, despite athlete Jessica Ennis winning gold for Team GB. The campaign is targeting the editor. Dominic Mohan, take the bare boobs out of the sun, hashtag no more page three. So to discuss this campaign, with me in the studio is political about their business and what people see in the publication. Charlotte. Well, I think the biggest problem, actually, is that we need more high-profile women, actually. I think page three in itself is a bit of a straw man. I mean, would I choose to... I, I read the sun, but would I choose to stare at page three? No, not really. But I th I'm more interested in achievements of women. I think they should have more coverage. And I think this focusing on page three is just a bit of a straw man, actually, to the bigger issues, which is we need more high-profile women in society, in politics, in law, in the media, and so on. I think that's a much more something we should be focusing on a lot more. But does this page three, anti-page three campaign not highlight these issues in some way? No, no, like I said, I think it's a straw man. I think we should be having a campaign about promoting fantastic women, like you mentioned Jessica Ennis, but there's plenty of others in all sorts of walks of life, and I would like the Sun and all newspapers to be giving them more coverage instead of um, us worrying about page three. Terence Blacker, what do you think? Does page three have a justified place in 20 school blogger Charlotte Henry? founder of the Weak Woman blog, Caroline Criado Perez, and on the telephone, Dr. Rita Pal, a psychiatrist and medical journalist, and writer and broadcaster, Terence Blacker. Do pictures of topless women on page three of a national newspaper with a daily circulation of two and a half million readers have a justified place in 2012? I'll start with you, Caroline Criado Perez. Well, I feel that they don't. Um, the main objection that I have to page three is not in any way the nudity so much as the context, which is that it's in a newspaper which should be about telling us about the important things that are happening today. Um, and the, the female contribution, the major contribution to that, is a massive image of a woman standing there not doing anything, um, which when you put it in the context of lots of men going around doing lots of things, um, it's very problematic about, you know, what we think women are capable of. So you're talking a woman with bare breasts versus a man in a suit going on 12, or do you agree with Charlotte that it's a bit of a straw man? Well, I agree with a lot of what's been said in that Obviously, women want as, one wants as much positive coverage of women's achievements these days. I, I, I personally think there's quite a lot uh, in the press, but I agree. Obviously, one would agree with that. But I just think it's old-fashioned. I now think that that we've sort of outgrown this. It's something very 70s. It's sort of, it's sort of carry-on films. You know, it's sort of, this seems to be more to do with comedy than than sex. And I, I think it is. It's sort of embarrassing that it's part of our national life and. I, I think this campaign, the tone of this campaign, is very good. It's not these should be banned. It's not thumping the table. It's just saying, you know, come on, let's let's grow up a bit and and recognise that um, it, the the time for this kind of sort of mild titillation over a cup of tea is is past, and and we should we should just move on and 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 um, and you know, obviously the 